Welcome back, compadres. I'm Brandon Tolbert, and today we're talking fluid flow. In your engineering career, there's a chance you're going to have to size a pump. You might have to design a heat exchanger to cool electronic components. You might take over an oil and gas field and have to debottleneck the surface systems. Who knows, but they all cover the same central topic, and that is fluid flow. So if you don't understand it, well, it's going to hit you like a freight train, and it's going to run you over. I don't want that to happen to you. So today I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step calculation on how to calculate frictional pressure losses in a pipeline for single phase incompressible flow. And then we're going to code it because we want to repeat the calculation for different scenarios. So guys, you get ready. Let's get started. Here we go guys. I'm going to show you how to calculate frictional pressure loss in a pipeline in six steps. So we're given the following data. You have flow rate in terms of barrels per day, viscosity, pipe roughness, which is a value you need to look up based on the material of your pipeline, the ID or inner diameter of the pipeline right here, specific gravity, and length. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the pressure loss, frictional pressure loss per unit length, and multiply it by the length of the pipeline to get our frictional pressure to drop across the pipeline. Some key concepts I want to discuss or cover is the darcy weisbach equation. This is the equation you use to calculate your frictional head losses. Friction factors, which is going to change depending on whether it's turbulent or laminar flow. And pipe roughness. So let's get started. Step number one is to apply unit conversions to the fundamental equations to get it into units you are working in. So this is our darcy weisbach equation, our original one, our original Reynolds number. Now in the aerospace industry, we work in terms of gallons per minute, viscosity in centipoise, and diameter in inches. So if we apply unit conversions to these equations, you get this result for the darcy weisbach equation. The same with Reynolds number. Now you can work with these equations in terms of gallons per minute, centipoise, and inches. If you don't know how to do unit conversions of equations, go read my blog post on unit conversions. This is extremely important, and if you do it, you'll definitely benefit from it. In the oil and gas industry, we work in terms of barrels per day, centipoise, and inches. So if we apply unit conversions to the darcy weisbach equation and the Reynolds number equation, we get these equations. The result is these equations right here. So after you convert the equations to the pr units you're working in, you can go to the hand calculation and begin calculating values. So here's our data we're using. I showed it here. It's the same data we used in the first slide. Step number two is to calculate Reynolds number. And this is the Reynolds number equation for the oil and gas industry, as we showed in the previous slide. If the Reynolds number is greater than 2100, we consider it turbulent flow. If it's less than that, we consider it laminar flow. Step number three, you need to calculate the friction factor with the appropriate equation. If it's turbulent flow, you can apply the swami jane equation. So this is the equation right here. I put in the values and I get this result. If it were, if Reynolds number were less than 2100, then it's laminar flow and you'd apply this equation to calculate friction factor. It's a linear relationship, so it's really easy. Step number four is to calculate our head loss per unit length. This is the darcy weisbach equation. If you put in the values, you get this result. Notice the units are in foot per foot. Step number five is to convert your head loss to pressure. And the best way to do that is to multiply it by 0.433 PSI per foot times the specific gravity fluid times head loss. This is one of the most important equations in fluid mechanics right here. If you learn this, you'll go a long ways. It's, it's really easy to apply and really easy to remember. It's used to convert between pressure and head loss or feet to, PS, to PSI or vice versa. So if you multiply this by the head loss, you get the pressure loss gradient in the pipeline right here. Step number six, now that we have our pressure loss gradient, all we do is multiply it by the length of the pipeline and the units cancel and they work out. And so you end up with your frictional pressure loss in the, across the entire distance of the pipeline. So there we have it guys. Now we're going to go code this so we can apply it to a variety of different situations. 
Now we're going to code it. Here's the relevant data that was used in our hand calculation problem. I'm going to put in my VBA function to show you what it calculates here in PSI per foot. So I name the function this right here. I go up here, press this, and it, you can see the inputs. Flow rate, diameter, specific gravity, viscosity, and pipe roughness. You can look up that value depending on your situation. And so look at that. I end up with the same pressure gradient, and if I multiply that by the length of the pipeline in this cell, I get the exact same result. So let's see how this works. So what you want to do is press Alt F11, opens up the code. I'm going to put in a stop point here, and I'm going to recalculate it. So what you have here is the code for VBA, for the pressure gradient in a pipeline in oil field units. And so if we go through, here I've defined two methods, the Reynolds number method and the friction factor method and it's got some coding logic in here to determine if it's laminar or determine what friction factor equation to use based on the Reynolds number. So let's step through this. This is my main equation. It takes inputs of flow rate, diameter, specific gravity, viscosity, and pipe roughness. And then we're going to step through it. So if you press F8 we can step through this. Um, this is the gravitational constant 32.2 feet per second squared and then I calculate the area using pi over 4 times d squared and then I calculate my Reynolds number. I've broken this down and you can see here if I press F8 it steps into my Reynolds number function and so if we step through that this is my Reynolds number for oil field units and then it returns that value and you can see here it returned a value of 35,000 770.8 which is the same value we calculated in our hand calculations and now I pass that value into the friction factor method. If I do that it steps through it and here's my logic if Reynolds number is less than 2100 then use the friction factor this friction factor for laminar flow it skips it because it wasn't less than 2100 it was 35,000 so now it goes down to my Swami Jane equation and I've broken these the fractions up so I could shorten the equation here but it's the Swami Jane equation the same one you saw during the slide presentation and so I calculate the fraction that fraction and then I calculate the friction factor and I get a value of 0.0248 which is the same value we got previously it returns that value to my main function and then now this is my Darcy Weisbach equation in PSI per foot. I multiplied it by the specific gravity and the constant 0.433 PSI per foot to get my answer in PSI per foot. And so if we press F8, it skips ahead, and then we press F8 again, we will see here, if we press F8 again, we get this, the values. Now we can test out different values with our VBA code. What if it's a 2,000 foot long pipeline? Bang, we have a higher pressure loss. What if we have a smaller pipeline diameter? This is my inner diameter. Whoa, that's a large pressure loss. So see, you can play with these values and you can use this in a real world application. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and the code is on my website. If you want to copy it and use it, I would definitely recommend you change the units based on what what your your application is in the aerospace industry it's a little bit different I go back look at those equations I gave you in the slides and code that so that's it guys I hope this is useful and you guys keep coming back thanks there we have it guys we went through a step-by-step -step procedure a hand calculation on how to calculate frictional pressure loss in a pipeline and then we coded it in Excel VBA Guys, programming is important. If I'm going to leave you with one word of advice, code your stuff. You're going to go through, start your engineering career, and they're just going to throw stuff at you. You're going to forget stuff. It's just going to leave your mind. And if you code it, you at least have it in your back pocket whenever you need to pull it out, and you don't have to remember everything. So guys, if you can take one piece of advice, learn how to code. In Excel VBA, is the easiest place to start. So, 
You guys keep working hard, and I'll see you next time. Adios.